Hey everybody, this is Justin with Songbirds Music Art and Dance Center, and today we're doing our last installment of the video series, How to Build an Electric Guitar Body from Scratch. Where we last left off, we had gone through the whole process so far about how to make and shape the body from solid wood, how to then route it out with a router, and we last left off with our sanding step. I also gave you guys a short video in between there about how to best uh, use spray paint or aerosol to get a nice even paint coat on something, and we're going to be using that today for the finishing step. So I've actually gone ahead and finished my guitar already because um, I was making this uh, guitar for a friend, which was due at the end of February, and it's past that now, and uh, here's what it looks like. So I've assembled the guitar, I've got my guitar body here from the original wood, you can tell on the back, you see all those cool grain patterns like we've already been working with. And of course, I have installed the guitar neck and put all the hardware in it, so I kind of went ahead a couple steps. But I wanted to show you the finished product to kind of explain where we're going. You can tell that I kept the original wood for most of the guitar. You can see those grain patterns in there. But I also did a little bit of painting. So up here towards the bottom of it, I purposely made it look damaged, which is called relic or making the guitar a relic guitar. And there's a bit of spray paint up here on this corner on the horn. And on the back, you can see there's a little bit of spray paint striping on the horns and in the back. So really it's a combination of, of the oil process, which is the regular natural wood, and also the painting process. So it's up to you to decide what you want to do with your guitar build. Whether you want to do an oil like this where it's natural wood, if you want to do a little bit of spray paint or a lot of spray paint, um, or something like that. If you, uh, we're going to go through both processes uh, one by one, but we'll start with the original natural oil one. So if you like the pattern of your grain, you want to keep the wood looking the way it does, you're going to want to use some kind of Danish oil or tongue oil or teak oil, all of which is available at Lowe's and Home Depot or online very easily. You're just going to grab a can of that and you're going to follow the directions of the manufacturer. So if they say, you know, to flood the surface, wipe it off, wait a couple hours, whatever it is, follow those instructions and give it a lot of time to dry. When I do oil, I always do two coats, and I make sure that it's rubbed in really nicely and it dries well on the piece of wood before continuing. Um, after that is done and it's dry and you're positive that it's dry, I do think it's important to do a coat of aerosol shellac. You can get shellac in little spray cans as well at these stores very easily. Um, and it's nice because it dries really quickly. So you take your shellac and you just spray it over the guitar with the technique we talked about in the last bonus video and that'll give you a nice coat that seals in the oil. Now the oil should have been dried already, but the shellac does have it. It's a fail-safe barrier coat between that oil and what you're gonna be doing at the end, which is the high gloss coat to make your guitar look really shiny. So that's just a really nice step I like to include. And that's actually what is on this guitar. I stopped at that shellac coat. You can see in the light, it's got some shininess to it on the body there. Um, but it is a nice uh, smooth coat that feels good and it's natural feeling with the wood. Uh, if you decide to do the paint option, um, of course, you know, we've already made sure the guitar is sanded smooth and it's clean and perfect. You will take whatever spray paint color you like, so whatever you get from, you know, online or the stores, and you're just going to be very, very uh, liberally applying it, right? So you spray it over the body multiple times, going in multiple passes, making sure not to get any runs, but you definitely want to have the coat be solid and thick everywhere on the guitar. Be extra careful when you're spraying around this part. So like around the horns here and also the neck joint because it's really easy to spray too much or too little and have uneven colors there, but it's even easier to get a run. So be very careful around that part. Uh, the spray paint coat, if you're doing a color, you know, say for example, you picked blue, wanted to make a nice blue guitar, you do not need to put a shellac coat on top of the spray paint blue color. So once you've got your color and you like it, leave it, it's fine. Now, at this step, you should have the color that you want, whether it's that natural oil, or if you wanna try something like with a dye color, or if you wanna do your spray paint, whatever it is, it's done, and you should be very happy with what you've chosen. Um, we are going to exercise our patience now, and we're going to have to wait. So a lot of those spray paint cans or oil colors or whatever on the back will tell you their dry times and their cure times. We want to look at the cure time, which means that the paint or whatever it is will be totally dry with no ability to, to mold or shift or to shrink or crack. And then we want to take that time and extend it. Um, I find that a lot of manufacturers shorten their recommended dry and cure times because uh, we're all very impatient people and we want to buy the product that has the shortest dry time. 
So it's I, it's a little bit conspiratorial, but I don't always trust the dry times on the labels because I think it's always best to extend them to be safe. So say for example, a good rule of thumb is 72 hours of cure time, no matter what you use. So like on this guitar, I did the oil and I did the shellac. The shellac technically says five minutes of dry time on the can, but I gave it a full 72 hours to make sure that it wasn't gonna move anywhere and that it wouldn't shrink or crack or change. So once you have your color coat, wait a very long time, as long as you can stand it, to make sure that the guitar has been has settled. Um, so store it in like a warm, dry place, somewhere that's out of dust. Um, you notice on this guitar, of course, that it has the neck attached to it, but um, you do want to uh, make a, a fake neck or something that you can use to hang the body with while it's drying. So I just took a little piece of scrap wood and I put a hole in it with a screw that lines up with where the screws go anyway. And I just hung that from a little piece of wire in my garage and that was enough to let it dry without being disturbed. That way it doesn't have to rest on anything or collect dust anyway. And that brings us to the last step. So once that coat is done and the, uh, you know, the color is fully dry, the only thing that's left is to add that gloss coat. You don't have to do this. As I mentioned already, that guitar I just made does not have the gloss coat on it, but other ones like the ones behind me do. It's totally up to you. I think the gloss coat gives it a little more professional look and it feels better and it really gives it that high gloss shine that everyone uh, goes crazy for. So it's definitely worth a shot. I would recommend trying it if you have the time and patience for it. Um, there are two ways to do the gloss coat. You can do a polyurethane spray spray can, which is very accessible at Lowe's and Home Depot and online. Or you can also do nitrocellulose lacquer. I would not recommend nitrocellulose because it's actually really bad for the environment and it's a lot more difficult to work with. Um, it is like the original guitar finish. So if you are into like antique guitars or how they were doing it back in the 50s and 60s, that is all nitrocellulose. So you can experiment with that um, maybe on a couple later builds or something, but I wouldn't recommend starting with that for your first one. Polyurethane is great. It's actually a harder finish and it will resist scratches and dents better anyway. So it's kind of a win-win um, and it's better for the environment and for your nose. So I would recommend polyurethane. Uh, grab a couple cans of that. One can will not be enough. I recommend two or three just to be safe because you're gonna need all of it to spray on the guitar. So like we talked about in the spray technique video, you just take that polyurethane and you're going to spray it quickly and broadly over the guitar, being extra careful to not get runs because if you do get a run in the finish at this point, it will be hard to fix. Polyurethane uh, dries very hard and uh, you don't want to have to you know, sand off a run and run the risk of sanding right into your finish and having to repaint again and all kinds of things. So take your time. Don't ever do the finishing process here uh, in a rush. You know, make sure you set up a good block, maybe like an hour to do a coat to be really careful not to have a run start. Um, like I said in the last video, I don't ever do more than three coats of finish a day. So I, you know, I'll do one in the morning, let it sit with at least one hour in between the next coat, do one like around lunch or dinner or whatever, and then one before bed, and that's it. Um, if you put too many on too fast, that'll have a cure problem where the, the bottom coats that you've layered on won't get fully dry because they're not exposed to air. And then you might be able to do something like, you know, dent your guitar or leave some kind of ripple or run in it if you apply too much pressure. It's just not, to, it's not a good idea to do more than three coats. So you're gonna to wanna to keep repeating this process for several days um, where you do three coats at least, or sorry, three coats per day for maybe three or four days. So you're really building up like at least 12 coats of, of lacquer on this guitar, just building up and building up so that it gets nice and thick and you really see a nice shine in the finish. I like to finish my spray cans. So if I bought two cans of aerosol, I'm gonna use the whole thing um, because you really can't do too much. You think about how much uh, lacquer is actually being sprayed on the guitar, it's very minimal. It's like sheets of paper. So you're just stacking up tiny layers of this finish to build something really impressive. When you've used your aerosol cans and it's all over, dispose them in a, in a safe way, and then hang your guitar up in the garage or wherever it was before to dry and cure. Now, unlike the first process, this does not take 72 hours. This takes much longer. So this is where your patience will be tested. <laughs> hang it up and then start a new project or do something else. It's best to forget about it, honestly, so put it somewhere where you're not gonna see it a lot and you're not gonna be tempted to take it down. Um, and let it dry for at least two weeks. 
I know that sounds crazy. Two weeks is a very long time when you're excited to play with a new instrument, but it has to wait at least two weeks. It's even better if it can wait longer. So if you're able to hold out for like a month or even more, it'll really help make the, the process easier because that way there will be no possibility of that finish shrinking or changing on you. There's no point in doing our final, final step, which is sanding, if the finish is gonna change anyway. All right, so you've just gotta wait. Um, if you are doing a nitrocellulose finish, like we mentioned before, you do want to give it 72 hours of cure time, and then you wanna take a, a medium grit sandpaper, like 220 or 320, and you're gonna lightly scuff sand the surface of the guitar. That kind of opens up the pores in the finish, and it allows more solvent to escape. Polyurethane's a bit different, you don't need to do that as much, but uh, you still wanna give it that full two weeks at least to cure. Okay, assuming you've made it that far and you haven't been like absolutely rot with impatience, you will take your guitar back and you're just gonna examine it very closely in the reflection in the light. So, you know, find a good lit area, kind of look at the finish, and you'll probably notice that there is a little bit of uh, inconsistency. It's what we call orange peel texture because it looks kind of like the skin of an orange where you see this kind of like wrinkly crackliness in the finish. That is normal, there's not really any way to avoid that, so don't feel bad, that's supposed to happen. But we will get rid of it. So to do that, we're going to do our final sanding schedule, which is where we get our incredibly fine grit sandpapers to give us a very, very mirror uh, polished look on the guitar. I'm gonna start with 400 grit sandpaper, and you can use this either dry or with water. If you do wet sanding, you're gonna to wanna to make a little bowl of water and one drop of Dawn dish soap and you're just gonna keep dipping that sandpaper in the water to get it wet. The water helps it kind of form as a lubricant and it kind of moves some of that uh, sanding particles away from your workpiece. So it, it does kind of help towards the end, especially when we get to the finer grits. Anyway, you're going to sand over the whole bit of the guitar, be extremely careful to do this by hand, not with any machines, and to be extra cautious on the corners. So the parts here on the edge and around the horn it's very easy to sand through here and even sand through your paint. So just be like, you know, one or two passes and move on. Don't hit those spots very often. All you're looking for is you're looking for removing all of the shiny spots. So if you think of the orange peel as being kind of like a wave, when you sand it, you're taking off the peaks of that wave and you're lowering the, uh, the heights of the finish, right? You wanna lower it just to the point where the low parts of the wave are gone. So at the halfway point, when you've sanded off the high parts of the wave and the low parts are still there, you'll see that it looks like it has like polka dots and there are shiny polka dot spots on the guitar. That's because you haven't sanded far enough yet to get the bottom parts of the wave to be removed. So sand it just to the point where the whole guitar is kind of dull looking. It looks kind of like it's matte finished. It looks a little bit cloudy. Don't freak out. It's supposed to look like that. We will fix it. But now we have a foundation of our, of our finish, which we are able to keep sanding now so it's perfectly smooth and perfectly shiny. At this point, when you've got to this step, we're just going to step up the intensity of the sandpaper to even finer. So you go to whatever is next. So if you're able to get like 600, that's great. 800 is good too. Remember from our sanding video that we never want to jump too much. So you want to incrementally step up the numbers so that we get a fine finish. And, we, and then we're gonna do it. So we take that sandpaper. I would recommend doing wet sanding from here on out using your water and your dish soap and cleaning the surface often so that any particles that you've sanded off don't scratch the finish or the body. So you take that sandpaper, keep sanding over it by hand. Uh, just do a little bit because you definitely can over sand and then move on to your next bit of sandpaper. After you've gone to 800, which is kind of like the max of what you can get at Lowe's and Home Depot, I like to do, um, it's like a professional fine sanding kit, which you can get online or you can get at carpentry stores like uh, Rockler or Woodcraft. There are these little tiny like squares of sandpaper, um, little tiny sanding pads that go way up into the crazy high finishes. I think the one that I used on my last guitar ended at 12,000 grit, which is ideal. Right, you want to find a sandpaper that ends around 12,000 or even 16,000, something in there that's very high. And all you do is you literally rinse, wash, and repeat. You take that sandpaper, dip it in your water, and you step up slowly for each increment. And you'll notice as you do that that the guitar will get noticeably shinier with every single sandpaper you use. Just watch out for over sanding, like we said before. A little bit goes a very long way. 
when you get to the very end, you should be able to get that mirror finish and you should see no imperfections in the guitar finish. If you do notice some lower spots that are shinier than others, kind of like we talked about in the first step, that means that you have skipped ahead onto a guitar grit, or sorry, a sandpaper grit too quickly. So go back to an older grit where you're able to remove those high points and then resume with your sanding schedule. And that's all, there you have your finish. It will look very shiny, kind of like this guitar behind me here. You can see it, it looks kind of permanently wet. It's, uh, it's, it's sparkling and reflecting in the light. An optional last step is that you can buff it so you can take a clean cotton cloth and you can use uh, some elbow grease or you can use a buffing wheel or one of those little buffing wheels that you attach to a power drill and then you go over your guitar all over the body shining it up with your buffing compounds. For the compound you use, I like to use um, car compounds, so like car polish. You can get that um, online very easily and you want to use the ultra fine car polish just so it gives it an extra shine and it doesn't actually undo the work of your sanding, it enhances it because it, the compound is finer grit than the last sandpaper you used. You can also use Jewelers Rouge, which is like the actual um, like rouge sticks that they use on like a buffing wheel. Uh, that can be found online also at Home Depot and Lowe's as well. Um, remember this step is optional, but using that buffing really does make it pop and gives it like that final, final step and shine. And it's easy to maintain because it's much easier than sanding. And that's it. If you went through all these steps and you were able to finish your guitar project, congratulations. This is a very hard thing to do, but it's also extremely rewarding. You've made your first electric guitar body from scratch. I am personally thrilled with how this one came out. Um, I will admit I was a little nervous through the beginning because I wasn't sure if I was going to like the, uh, the relic paint with the oil, but when it comes together at the end, it just absolutely pops and I'm so happy with how it turned out. I hope yours are turning out uh, great as well and that you are happy with your work. If you're not, remember you can always try again and every single build that you do gets better. That's the cool thing about this is you learn so much by doing it and it always improves every single time. Thank you so much for sticking into this series. Um, this is a four part series. I hope you learned something every step of the way. If you have questions, you can always contact us at Songbirds Music Art and Dance Center and stay tuned for our next project series, which will be coming soon. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.